The future of data is green. I'm sure all of us have received that email that says, don't print it, save some trees, store it some way, right? But think again, every time you save that email with that huge detachment, it's being stored in a computer somewhere, right? In a form that you can retrieve it anytime you want. And every single day, millions of us, billions of us, are saving that email, save some trees. And all that data accumulates megabytes upon megabytes. And they are stored almost forever. I can imagine retrieving my email 20 years ago. I was an internet pioneer and I was sending emails that many decades ago. And all that time, the data is accumulating, stored in some computer somewhere in a data center that probably is chewing up tons of electricity, spinning disks, powering these CPUs, all because instead of printing that email, we're storing it. In other words, the more data we store, the more data we use, the more photographs you take of your meal before you upload it into your Facebook page, you are actually using a lot more energy. And collectively, if all of us were to be doing this all the time, you might guess that the impact on our energy consumption going forward will be tremendous. In fact, with the Internet of Things, people are telling us we have these sensors all over the place, each one of them collecting data, more and more data 24-7. And all these Internet of Things devices collecting data have got to store that data somewhere in the cloud, together with our emails that we need to retrieve 20 years later. And all that cumulatively means that the data that's stored in these humongous data centers somewhere out there, and there are today thousands, tens of thousands of these data centers consuming, guzzling up electricity, most of which are produced by non-renewable energy sources. We all have that responsibility because each one of us is saving that email. The world's electricity consumption of these data centers are po is poised to increase from 5 to 10 percent of the global consumption, and that is a huge number to contemplate. The impact on our environment going forward will be tremendous. And all of us are responsible for this. It did not strike me until I was tasked a couple of years back to build a supercomputing data center, a, a one petaflop supercomputer. That was what I was supposed to build, right? So I was on the board of a data center company for a you know, good 10 years or more, and it, I, it didn't strike me that the impact to our environment, environment will be that tremendous. So here's how it works out. I had to power up this great big supercomputer, and I had to provision for one megawatt of electricity. For every megawatt of electricity I had to pump into the computers to drive the chips, I had to provision for another half a megawatt of electricity to do what? To cool these devices, because the amount of heat generated from these computers is incredible. So this becomes a double whammy. 
And all of us don't really need to think too hard to know that every time we use the mobile phone for more than five minutes, it gets pretty hot, right? So think about it, a double whammy in terms of energy usage. Some people have thought, that's a great idea. Why not we put all these big data centers, right? Put it in a very cold place, like somewhere in Iceland. Wow, we will get to be able to use renewable energy, free geothermal energy, and then in cold Iceland, free cooling. Wouldn't that be a great idea worth spreading? So it turns out, lots of people have already gotten this idea, and they're putting their data centers in cold places, Iceland, Sweden, and so forth. But what about sunny Singapore, sitting right on the equator? Is there any way we could put our data centers out in cold places and then somehow retrieve that data back whenever we need it? Well, it turns out my colleagues at the Agency for Science and Technology and Research Singapore have come up with this idea of building high-performance internet connections from Singapore around the world. So they're using this new technology called InfiniBand to transfer data at incredibly high speeds so that even if we put a data center out in Iceland, we in Singapore can access that data instantly. So this project is currently ongoing as we speak. And we are able to transfer one terabyte of data within 30 minutes. But it turns out that every time we shine light through that fiber optic cable, we're using up electricity. For every data that we send out, every bit and every byte of data that we send out, at the click of a button, energy is being used. Surely we need to find a more sustainable solution to this. How can we in Singapore on the tropics, sustain a smart city whereby every single moment of the day, 24-7, we are utilizing data to make ourselves more intelligent, to make ourselves more competitive. There's no turning back. We need to use this data, but we need to think of ways of making it sustainable with minimal impact on our environment. So it turns out that I'm actually a molecular biologist by training. I work in the National University of Singapore Medical School. What do I know about supercomputing? As a molecular biologist, well, we know about a lot about nature, don't we? It turns out that nature's way has been pretty efficient. The waste product of one organism is actually the food of another organism, gross as, as it may sound. But that's the cycle of life. The waste output of one organism becomes the input, the food of another. And that symbiotic relationship has seen this little blue planet become such an incredibly fantastic place. So, I decided to consult some of my engineering and physics colleagues and ask them the question, what can I do as a molecular biologist tasked to build a supercomputer? And one of my sagely colleagues waved his hand out of his window and he said, look over there. I said, what? Outside the window, he pointed towards this little offshore island called Jurong. And he said to me, there's your Iceland. I said, what, in Singapore? In this 
undiscovered corner of Singapore is an Iceland? So he said, did you know that we have something called the Singapore Liquefied Natural Gas Receiving Terminal out in Jurong? LNG for short. Liquefied Natural Gas is actually minus 162 degrees centigrade. 162 degrees below freezing point. Wow, that's pretty cold. No wonder he said that was our Iceland, out there in Jurong Island. So I said, so what? He said, did you know that we have tanks and tanks of these, giant tanks of these liquefied natural gas sitting out there in Jurong with lots of cold energy? And he said that, did you know that these guys out there have to take this minus 162 degrees, pretty cold, liquefied natural gas, and warm it up to about 10, 20 degrees in the process creating natural gas, which we could use to power our power stations. For that, you need to use energy to generate the heat, to warm up the liquid to gas. In fact, they're either using electricity to generate the heat, or sometimes they use seawater. And imagine the marine impact of sending out cold water into the seas. So he said, how about this? If we were to take these, this cold LNG and use that to cool your hot data centers, and then you take your heat and you send it out to warm the LNG, wouldn't that be an example of some kind of symbiosis? Industrial symbiosis. Something that you take from one system that generates waste, in this case, waste heat, and send that to another system that needs that heat to warm and to gasify the LNG. So I said, wow, tons of energy will be saved. So let's put it together. A system on one hand is the one that needs the heat, and ends up generating cold waste. And on the other side, you have hot supercomputers generating lots of heat, requiring the cooling. If we were to put the two things together, co-locate them, the waste heat of one system becomes the heat that's needed in the other system. Tons of energy will be saved. Could this be the way in which we could go forward minimizing the impact on our environment by generating systems like these, symbiotically, supporting a smart city in this way, in a sustainable way going forward? So think about it. Does it necessarily need to be these huge, incredibly large data centers and these huge, incredibly large tanks of really cold LNG? Turns out that there is a company called TerraCool that has already gotten this worked out. But that's only at the industrial scale. But can we think about ways in which we could make it more widespread. Searching the internet, I found a few companies that have already started thinking about doing this on a domestic scale. Now, this is an ordinary radiator that you would see in a cold country. Every time winter comes in, the home needs to be warmed, right? Now, suppose if we were to put computers 
lots and lots of these computers and use them as home radiators. Wow, wouldn't that save a lot of energy? Because we wouldn't have that double whammy. If we can put lots of these computers and make them double up as radiators, we will save a lot of electricity. But in Singapore, we don't need heat. <laughs> we need air conditioning. So I got thinking, could we take an apartment block, condominium somewhere, or the typical HDB flat, maybe we could put, suppose we put a data center in each of these homes, right? And these will be generating heat. Then I asked the question, what do we need heat for in our homes, right? Oh, we need heat for our showers. We need heat for cooking. We need heat for warming our mug of coffee every morning. So if we were to combine these two things together, wouldn't it be more sustainable? Think about it, a mini data center in every home. One megawatt of electricity that I had to provision for powering up my supercomputer is like a thousand electric kettles, one kilowatt each, with another half megawatt that I need to cool if I can combine this, I could save a lot of energy. Perhaps one day, who knows, some of us out there might be thinking of inventing a wonderful solution like the computer chip packed into a mug, fire that up and warm my mug of coffee every morning. This is another example of how we can think about nature's symbiosis, industrial symbiosis, to perhaps domestic symbiosis. In this way, perhaps one day, homes like this might become data centers of the future. Each one of us is responsible for generating data. All of us need to use data in the world going forward, in this data, digital data age. We need to think more. We need to think hard about how we can make this a sustainable effort going forward. I believe that we can do this. Together, if we can think of these new ideas and put two things together, heat generating devices together with heat requiring devices, maybe the future of data can be green. Thank you.